include everything. All right, guys, we're back in Free Code Camp. We're doing that Village Rover. Um, we're going to be using functions. All right, cool. Let's get in it to win it. So stop all the ogres and save all the peasants. So define a function. Here dot find attack enemy is equal to a function that var enemy equals here dot find if enemy here dot attack enemy. Now just one line of code here dot find attack enemy can be used. So basically what we're doing, all right, let's just jump right in. So while true, you can patrol the village using move x y find attack enemy. So our function here find attack enemy finds an enemy. Uh, tries to find enemy if there's an enemy it attacks now move to the right entrance so the right entrance here is 6031 so we'll we'll now go to hero dot move XY 6031 and now we want to call our function here so basically all we're gonna do let's say find and attack enemy this is us calling our function. Our function is already defined right here. This is the name of it. It doesn't take in any parameters. And it's basically just going to run this code. So let's go ahead and submit that. So move there. Then move back. And then it's going to check if there's an enemy, attack the enemy. Instead of us having to loop our code like that, we can go ahead and just loop the function that does the same thing. It makes our code cleaner. It also makes it um, easier and more reusable. Uh, definitely something that a function we would want to define for this in the future. So leave it to Cleaver. I imagine we're going to be using our cleaving ability here. So the ogres must die. Uh, the function cleave when close defines a parameter called target and then if the targets less than five cleave or attack Okay, so we're basically gonna have a cleave when close target. So now it's gonna take in a parameter before it didn't so Right here, you'll see our while loop says while while true find an enemy if there's an enemy run or cleave when close now We're not gonna change anything in here uh, but we're going to actually write the function here. So we'll say if the hero distance is less than 5, if cleave is ready, so do an if statement, check if it's ready. If it is ready, we want to go ahead and cleave. Leave target. So, see how this is enemy? We need to change this to target. The reason we're not checking if it's there is because we're passing in a parameter only when it's true here. Else, we just want to. We can just go say and say attack. Target. Attack the target. Alright, let's go ahead and submit that. I think that's good. So cleave. So cleave isn't up, so they're gonna be autoing. Cleave should be up for this group. And this is our while loop running that's calling our function. So functions just store code essentially, and then you call back to it so that you don't have to. Uh, reuse retype your code out again and again it cleans it up a lot as well so very nice up next a fine mint cash money maybe peons must die collect the coins all right so we're going to be doing there's a function called pick up coin 
So if there's a coin, move there and get that. So what's going on here is we're calling the coin object here. We're saying find the the position parameter and the x param the position x parameter and the position y parameter and input that in there. So this is just like 42 and 30 or something like that. Write the attack to enemy function below. So what we want to do is write a function here. We're going to say function attack enemy. And this takes in no parameter. It could, but we're not going to. Um, I'm going to say var enemy. And we're going to say if enemy. So if there is an enemy, uh, we want hero dot attack enemy. All right, find the nearest enemy and attack them if they exist. So this is our code right here. And then we're say uncomment and uncomment this line after you write attack enemy. So now what's going on here is we want our attack enemy function to run. Let's try to clean this up as well. So attack enemy or pick up a coin. So if there's an enemy that's gonna attack, if not, it's going to pick up a coin. So we go one, then one, one. It's gonna attack once, then it's gonna pick up a coin. Attack once, pick up a coin. Attack once, pick up a coin. So we may have to change this to attack twice, but let's, let's see how our, our guy does first. It looked like they've been dying in one hit lately. So we're gonna attack first. And we're gonna go pick up a coin. So there's no enemies right now, so we're just gonna continue picking up coins. Attack, now go back to picking up coins. This makes our wall loop a little bit easier to understand as well because we have our code broken up into segments, which is uh, another great thing about functions as well. So while there's no enemies, pick up coins. Once you get a coin now, so they're gonna attack this guy. Yo, no, no, that ain't cool, bro. Uh, lay that dude out. Continue picking up the coins. Now it looked like they were continue. She was continuing picking up coins, but that's actually just the pathing uh, going on there. So we've completed 20 while loops and 20 argument levels. Pretty solid, pretty solid. Um, things are going smoothly. Up next, we'll be doing friend and foe. Uh, more of the same. And what is this? Backwards brawl? Uh, Alright, and we'll, at the end of this, uh, it looks like we're coming to the end. We'll be doing the backwards brawl and then the multiplayer as well once we finish up. Uh, the last few in Backwoods Forest. So as always, guys, thank you for the, those of you who have supported me on Patreon. Thank you for um, subscribing. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Appreciate it a ton. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and share and support me on Patreon. Check out wayup.com. It's a great way to find full-time jobs, internships, part-time jobs, and one-time freelance work for the college student. All you need is a .edu email. It's completely free, and you'll help me out in the process too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.